On this episode of Doing the Most, we're reviewing the Easy Jiggler. Comment bros and various artists, everything from me to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. I've been homebrewing since about 2009. And I remember when I made my very first batch of homemade wine. It was a country fruit wine made from berry blends and a ton of table sugar. And I think I even threw ground black pepper in there. And as the thing started to drop clear, I had a realization moment that I had no clue how to siphon it to secondary. I remember getting on the internet and doing a ton of searches, looking at winemaking.net and homebrewing forums and... YouTube was very young back then, so there wasn't a lot of great content around it there. And eventually I figured it out. You just put your racking cane down in there, suck on the end of the hose, and let gravity do the rest. And for 10 years, that served me perfectly well. And as I learned more about homebrewing, I learned so much more about siphoning. I learned about auto siphons and carboy caps and all the various methods. And up until we started this YouTube channel, I had no idea how contentious the subject of siphoning is. I had no idea how many disparate camps of siphon believers there are out there who believe very firmly in their way of doing it. You would think from some of the negative comments we've received on our videos about my suction siphon technique that I was the, like, putz in some kind of infomercial for a better way. Regular old racking getting you down? Racking cane more like racking lame? Transferring your beer feel like old news? Worried about slobber getting into your bruise? Introducing the Easy Jiggler! One night I was browsing Reddit, it was late, and I had landed on a thread about siphoning, weirdly enough, and someone in the comments had recommended using a Jiggler siphon. And they went on to elaborate that you basically stick the racking cane, this jiggling racking cane, into your carboy, and you shake it. And the jiggling motion creates the vacuum needed to draw the liquid up and down and use gravity to transfer it. Sounded awesome. Sounded like maybe this was the thing that would finally get me away from just sucking on the end of my tube. So I bought it and $40 and about a week later, it showed up. Now I wanna hit the pause button here for a second because uh, we're gonna give this away. So stay tuned through the end of the video to learn how to enter to win the Easy Jiggler. Uh, It will be this exact one and you're about to learn why. As I was doing research to put this review together, it was really interesting to see all the different belief systems in in racking. And some folks are just really ardent about the fact that sucking on the tube is not a big deal because the alcohol content and the competitive yeasts should do plenty to prevent infection. There were other folks who took it a step further and said you should swish some vodka around in your mouth or dunk it in sanitizer after, you know, these various ways of trying to make sure that you are sanitizing while still using mouth suction. One cool way is using a turkey baster, which I haven't been able to figure out exactly, but I figured out a way that kind of works for me. Me. And of course, there are the auto siphon acolytes who really firmly believe that the auto siphon is the best way to go. So I did a ton of research and prep for this, probably more than necessary, as I really wanted to familiarize myself with the pros and cons of every option out there. And even after doing all of that research and reading all of the propaganda and all the arguments and all the debates, I, I, I do not believe that the auto siphon is the best method. And we'll get to that here in a minute. But first, let's talk about this guy. The Easy Jiggler is stainless steel. It is quite a wide diameter compared to a typical racking cane, even compared to my stainless steel racking cane that I use. And it's got this contraption at the end. Inside of here, you have a few pieces. There's a glass ball, a spring, And then there's a rubber O-ring around here that keeps it liquid tight. And I've got to say that this thing is gorgeous. It is beautiful. It looks like something out of like space age technology, that kind of like retro futurism that can be so exciting. It looks really cool and it's made out of really great materials and the construction and machining on this is really impressive. The idea is that when you shake it, this glass ball allows liquid in and then blocks liquid out. And you do that enough times until the liquid level rises high enough inside of here that the ball starts rattling around inside there 
and your siphon starts. And apparently these are used quite a bit in uh, siphoning for like fish tanks and aquariums, things like that. The thing is heavy duty. And I will say that once I got it started and did time trials on it, it racks almost twice as fast as a traditional racking system, which with five to six gallons, you're talking like six to seven minutes versus three to four minutes. So, and theoretically, this thing should never break. So I decided to put this thing to the test in a real world trial. I had read on the internet how it's supposed to work. It did not ship with any instructions. And I watched one YouTube video that kind of showed me what to do. So I tried this in bottling of our tart cherry meat. And frustratingly, no matter what I tried, I could not get this thing to reliably start. It would putter a little bit out of the tube. So I did more Googling. I watched a couple of more videos. I read around people's comments on the internet, trying to figure out desperately how to get this thing started and nothing seemed to work. And by the time I was done fussing with it, I had stirred up the lees at the bottom and had to put off bottling for another few days while it settled and cleared back out, which was extremely frustrating, but I wanted to use it in a very real world application to see how stupid proof it is the first time. I failed. So a few days later, I swallowed my pride and my emotions and my frustration about this, and I decided to run some trials. The first thing I had to do was figure out how to get the damn thing started. And so what I ended up doing was filling the tubing with water, plugging off the end of it, and sticking that down inside of the fake brew liquid. So I put the end lower than the racking cane and let go. And the liquid quantity was enough that it was able to pull the vacuum through and get the thing finally started. After I did one initial really big batch with it, it was a lot easier to get started in the way that you're supposed to with the jiggling. So then I was able to run some trials and I still couldn't get the thing properly started. I think my lowest count was like 12 shakes before the siphon finally got started, but sometime it could be 20 or 30, which is kind of absurd, honestly. And so in my trials, I learned that it is faster than a traditional racking cane. However, I wanted to see what would happen with a blanket of fruit at the bottom. So I had some pineapple in the fridge that I blended up with a little bit of water with an immersion blender and then poured into a bucket of fake brew. I let that sit for a few hours so it was nice and firm on the bottom. And then I used the Easy Jiggler. And so the real problem with this thing is it's wide open at the end. With most racking systems, you've got some sort of cap that helps prevent the sludge and lees and troop from getting into the racking cane, but there's nothing doing that here. And so I was really struggling to keep it above the pulp line in the bucket. And no matter how close I got to that puree at the bottom, I was losing suction with about two inches of liquid left to go. And so it was hard for me to even test whether or not pulp was gonna get sucked up in here. But fortunately, when I unscrewed the thing, no matter how hard I tried to keep this away from the pulp, it was still just wrapped in pulp on the inside. That little spring was just all twisted and tied up with pineapple gunk, and it was a little bit of a pain to clean, and definitely not uh, five minutes that I feel is worthwhile to add to my brew chores. Another thing that I didn't like about this was it came with this weird floppy silicone tubing and it didn't come with very much tubing. You can see that it's about as long as my bench here and I would have liked about two or three feet extra tubing on here. I think kind of the most frustrating part about that is this tubing is not a, a typical diameter. And so it would have been nice if they would have provided maybe even double the tubing to go on here so you could cut it to the length that you wanted because it's gonna not be as easy as standard racking tubing to replace. So because it's so short, and because my bench is grown-up size, when I'm trying to jiggle the thing, the tube is just flopping all over the place. And that creates a little bit of chaos while you're trying to figure out whether or not your vacuum has even gotten started. Incredibly frustrating. Not a big fan of this stupid tubing. 
And the last thing that really sent me over the edge as someone who brews in vintage glass carboys is banging this thing around, trying to get the siphon going and hearing it clank against the neck of that carboy is like nails on a chalkboard. I just knew that at some point I was gonna shatter this carboy messing with this stupid thing. You know, I could see this working just fine for a bucket, but for a glass carboy, it really kind of made the hair on the back of my neck stand up hearing that noise. Not, not a big fan of that. And speaking of racking into buckets, this thing also doesn't come with a clip. Traditional racking cane typically has a clip, so you can clip it onto the side of a bucket or clip it to the neck of a carboy. And this clip is too small for me to repurpose it on this giant thing. And so there's also no way of just like leaving it sit without kind of jerry-rigging your own clip to get it to sit on top of the carboy neck or on the bucket. And for me, that's a real deal killer because then I'm standing around holding this thing while I'm waiting for it to rack. I guess at least I'm waiting less time than I would if I would be holding that one, but really not ideal. So there are some alternatives. And one of those is to just suck on the end of your racking tube and stick it in there and don't worry about it. Or if you want some peace of mind, placebo or otherwise, swish around a shot of vodka, suck on your tube and stick it in there. Alternatively, you could suck on the tube. Once the liquid gets close to your face, pinch it off with a tube clamp and then stick that into some Starzan before actually putting it into your carboy. Or you could use an auto siphon and auto siphons are very popular right now. It's a two piece siphon where you stick the tube down inside of your brew and you pump the inner tube until the liquid starts flowing. It's definitely simple. A lot of the complaints that I've read online are that they are typically fairly fragile. Some people go through multiples a year. They don't seem to make them in glass or stainless steel, so there aren't any really sturdier options. They do have a tendency to leach air, so they can lead to oxidization. So that's not ideal. And also it's just a best practice to replace plastic brewing gear pretty regularly because plastic can get scratched up and little bad buggies can get in and start living in those scratches. And then it becomes very difficult to track down where your sanitization problem is in your brew gear. So anything that's plastic, I'm pretty regularly cycling out of my brew gear. And where you can, you want to replace with stainless steel so you don't have to worry about that. So all that is to say, I'm just not bought in on the auto siphon, but I understand that it works well for some folks. For those who are using carboys, there's also a carboy cap, which is a rubber or silicon cap that goes over the neck of the carboy and it's got two holes. One is sized for racking tubing, and the other is for your mouth or for a turkey baster. So you create pressure by blowing on the open hole, and then that starts your siphon from the other hole. It's a great solution for people who use carboys, but if you are starting out in a bucket, that still leaves you with needing a solution when you're racking from a bucket. So unfortunately, that one is not an all-inclusive solution. So in my research, I found this method that involves using a turkey baster and what you're supposed to do i guess is use the bulb of it to create the suction that you need to get your siphon starting i couldn't get that to work but what i could get to work sanitizer but what i could get to work was sanitizing the tube of the turkey baster sticking that up inside the racking tubing and sucking on this. My mouth then never touches the tubing and I'm not great at it yet, but I'm getting the hang of popping that off and sticking the tubing down inside the carboy. I think for folks like me who have been brewing for a long time, who are really stuck in our ways and who prefer a mouth suction siphon, this is the most sanitary or seemingly sanitary way of using a mouth siphon and having the same sense of control over what you're doing. So going forward, this turkey baster that I bought on Amazon for like nine bucks will be a persistent part of my siphoning endeavors. And also it works pretty good as a wine thief. So dual purpose, nice. Closing thoughts, there's no one perfect way of siphoning and the easy jiggler, at least in my experience, is far, 
from a perfect solution. Yet it still exists and sometimes it's okay to appreciate form over function. What I would encourage of all of you is to choose the siphoning method which works best for you, takes into account sanitary practices that you believe are best for your brews and roll with it. And I am trying to continue to remain open to alternatives. I just didn't really care for this one. So for the peace of mind of doing the mosters who watch this channel regularly and don't want to watch me suck on the end of my racking tubing, I found a solution. Who'd have thunk? So to sum things up, the pros are, it looks cool, it's heavy duty, it racks nearly twice as fast as a traditional racking cane, and theoretically, it would never break. But the cons are, it's very difficult to get started. It doesn't come with enough tubing. It stirs up lease if the lease cake is too loose. It's difficult not to bang it on the neck of the carboy, and it doesn't even come with a clip to hold it onto the carboy. Needless to say, I'm not a fan. However, that means one of you can benefit from my frustration. So we're gonna give this thing away. And to enter this giveaway, it's real simple. I need you to thumbs up this video and jump down to the comment section and let me know how you prefer to siphon your brews from one vessel to the next. I would really like this comment section to be full of great information on how to siphon brews effectively and with sanitization taken into account. So hit that thumbs up, leave a comment, and you will be entered to win the Easy Jiggler. It's only been used a few times, and I promise you I have thoroughly cleaned this before it's gonna go back into its box and be shipped to somebody's doorstep. Thank you as always for watching. We hope to review some other home brewing equipment in the future. If you see something that you think we should review, drop us a comment somewhere and let us know. Our Instagram and Pinterest are doing the most okay. The website is doingthemost.org. And until next time, keep doing the most. <laughs>